not a it's not one of those fights where Crawford can easily lose. I mean Crawford Crawford's very skillful, man. He's 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 the top dog right now. I mean he's very skillful. One beats Terrence Crawford, and everybody's trying to age him out. He's from Rome. The boxing world has reacted to the much anticipated Canelo Alvarez versus Terence Crawford fight announcement. Latest reports suggest that His Excellency Turkey Alal Sheikh is planning to schedule this fight in the not so distant future. The head of Saudi Arabia's General Entertainment Authority disclosed to ESPN his contemplation of hosting the blockbuster showdown either in December or January within the United States. Alal Sheikh said, I'm working to deliver Canelo, but it will be a big fight for Crawford. I'll discuss with him the names. Crawford, the renowned former dual-weight undisputed title holder, has teamed up with Alal Sheikh in preparation for his imminent showdown with Israel Madrimov, the reigning WBA super welterweight champion. Bud's next match should be against Canelo, assuming he wins that fight. Crawford said of a possible showdown with Canelo, you got two of the top fighters of this decade, not just in the past year or so. You got two fighters that have been at the top for 10 years. You got the number one pound for pound fighter in the world, and you got the number one money man. I never like to overlook anybody. I got a fight coming up on August 3, and that's where my main focus is. Canelo once again affirmed his dominance as the supreme 168 pounder in the world by successfully defending his undisputed super middleweight championships in a unanimous decision victory over Jaime Mungia this past Saturday evening. Crawford gave his decision right away following the bout when he was present. He said, I thought it was a good fight. I thought Mungia fought hard. I just think his inexperience caught up to him and made him fall in and square up and, not stepping in with his punches, allowed Canelo to sit back, counter, and pick his shots. Canelo was a real patient. Alalshik has intentions to organize a 5 vs 5 event in December, intertwining the essence of the UK and USA, reminiscent of the Queensberry matchroom clash on June 1st. This time, the ring will witness a showdown between a squad of British pugilists and their American counterparts. The Saudi boxing chief's strategy to improve boxing includes all of this. He said, boxing is broken, but I think we don't need to get everything back together. Indeed, boxing sat atop the global sports landscape for much of the 20th century, but with the best matchups being relegated to pay-per-view, the sport's lack of centralized governing body, and the minimization of pugilism at the Olympics, the sport has waned in popularity since. Meanwhile, supporters may be eager to witness Canelo square off against David Benavides, but it seems the spotlight may shift to a potential bout with Crawford instead. Crawford sounded the bugle shortly after becoming the first male two-division unchallenged champion Champion. During his speech at The Breakfast Club, he proposed a catchweight bout. We can do something at a catchweight, Crawford said about his fight with Alvarez. He further added saying, probably 160 or something. 158? Yeah, 158, 160. That would be cool. There's no questioning Terence Crawford's prowess and unwavering resolve. Yet, the looming obstacle persists in the form of weight disparity. While Canelo Alvarez's slim chances of shedding pounds linger, the onus falls back on the welterweight champion to ascend. But the direct engagement of Turkey Alal Sheikh has injected a fresh dynamic into the situation. Numerous voices continue to echo the anticipation surrounding the elusive Benavidez bout, while others can't overlook the weight discrepancy concerning Crawford, seeing it as a significant concern. Nonetheless, there are those who confidently forecast the match's result. This fan seems rather unimpressed with the latest updates. They argue that a bout between a welterweight and a super middleweight boxer wouldn't draw much interest. In their view, if Canelo were to defeat Terry, Terence. Critics would quickly attribute it to Terence being significantly smaller than the Mexican powerhouse. The fan said, no one wants to see a welterweight versus a super middleweight. Common guys, let's be honest. When Canelo KOs him, some people would say Bud is too small, and that's a fact. We all want to see Benavidez versus Canelo. The upcoming showdown appears to be shrouded in uncertainty regarding its adherence to the specified timetable. Alvarez is already committed to a bout slated for September, while Crawford is steadfast in his pursuit of becoming an undisputed champion in a third weight class. Just like their predecessor, this individual also advocates for the anticipated clash between Alvarez and Benavidez. The fan added, He's not gonna fight because Canelo is supposed to fight in September. I mean, it could work, but I doubt it'll happen. And everyone wants Canelo versus Benavidez. Crawford is chasing his third undisputed right now. Yet another dissenting voice emerges, adamantly opposed to the notion. They argue that weight classes exist for valid reasons, deeming the notion of bridging a three-class chasm absurd. Instead, they propose that Bud focuses on unifying the 154-pound division, suggesting that such a feat would bring him greater renown. The fan expressed, I'm not as interested as everyone else in seeing this fight. There are weight classes for a reason. I'm a big Bud fan, but this is a bridge too far. 
would much rather see him attempt to unify and defend at 154. There are some great fights to be made, and much glory to gain at 154. This fan perceives Crawford's ascent of three divisions as a formidable challenge. However, in terms of skill, they place him above Alvarez. Consequently, if a bout were to occur, the odds favor Crawford, likely culminating in a decision victory. The fan added tall mountain to climb, but skill-wise, he's better than Canelo. I'd give Crawford a chance to win, decision. According to sources, Canelo seems to harbor some reservations about facing off against Terence Crawford. During an interview with Box Azteca, the reigning super middleweight champion expressed reluctance when questioned about the possibility of a showdown with Bud, opting not to entertain the idea further. According to him, it will become a fight where I have everything to lose and nothing to gain, because if I win, they'll say, oh, he was too small and everything. With the direct involvement of His Excellency Turkey Alalshik, the prospects of the historic Alvarez Crawford showdown materializing are now more promising than ever. However, trainer Andre Rozier is against Crawford challenging Canelo for the super middleweight crowns of the IBF, WBA, WBC, and WBO by climbing up to 168 pounds. Rozier said, I don't like it. Canelo hasn't been rattled by anybody and he's been in with some big punchers. I don't like that fight for Crawford. Rozier expressed that he liked Terrence at 154, and perhaps touching the ground at 160, but at 168, he didn't like it. He mentioned that Terrence would box well because he was a great athlete and boxer, but he didn't want to see him going into such a situation. Rozier expressed, I like Terrence at 154, and maybe touching the ground at 160, but at 168, I don't like it. He's going to box well because he's a fantastic athlete and a fantastic boxer, but I don't want to see him going into deep waters like that. Crawford seems acutely aware of the gamble, yet his drive to secure maximum earnings before his imminent retirement overrides caution. Facing off against Canelo promises Crawford his most lucrative payday to date, with the potential for a lucrative rematch if he emerges victorious. Nevertheless, should Canelo decisively outclass Crawford, it might mark the end of his career. Rosier said, if it's about money, it's a different story, but his legacy is being lamented in a fantastic way, and I'd hate to see it tarnished by trying to do too much. Rosier added that he believed Terence was already at that level, mentioning that he was headed to the Hall of Fame and had impressive accolades with Mountain High stats. However, he expressed his concern about Terence getting into a situation where he could be defeated. He added, I think Terence is already there. He's going to the Hall of Fame. His accolades have mountain high stats to them. I don't want to see him get into a situation where he could get beat. He has to build up to it. I just can't see it. But it appears that Crawford's focus is squarely on the greenbacks. He's eyeing the hefty purse he secured from his bout with Errol Spence. And the sole source for such a payday is Canelo. While athleticism might dictate otherwise, Crawford would opt to remain at 147 and square off against Jaron Boots Ennis if it were solely about the sport. Talking about fighters not moving up two to three weight classes in a single move in the past, Rosier said, these things didn't happen before, once in a blue moon, but now it's modus operandi. Now it's like, I'm fighting at 140, I'm going to be fighting at cruiserweight in a year. It's ridiculous. There's a common phrase and it holds true. There's a reason why there are weight classes. While this fight might remain a mere figment of imagination, Jeff Mayweather has some intriguing thoughts on how it could unfold. Following Canelo's recent triumph over Hami Mungia, a reporter from Fight Hype couldn't resist questioning Jeff about the potential showdown. After collecting Jeff's thoughts on Canelo's performance, the reporter went straight in with the fantasy fight. In response, the retired world champion said, I mean two weight classes. I think he could still have some problems with Crawford. Although Jeff was certain that Crawford posed a threat, he did not undervalue Canelo's ability. Jeff remarked that the weight was a significant factor to consider. He emphasized that Crawford's skills alone couldn't guarantee success at 168 against someone who had been in the sport for a considerable time. He said, but still, that weight is something to deal with. And you can't just say that because of Crawford's skills. He can automatically go up to 168 and beat the guy who's been doing this for a long time. And Canelo has been one of the best fighters in the world for a long time. So that's a big jump. However, Shakur Stevenson has expressed that. Canelo would be no match for Terence Crawford. Canelo's recent performance against Mungia impressed Stevenson, but he maintained that Bud was still superior to the super middleweight champion. He tweeted, Hellevu fighter Canelo is, 
Still, I think Bud beats him. It is true that Crawford is now the best fighter in the pound-for-pound -pound division. But as mentioned before, those victories came at super lightweight and welterweight, which are three and four weight classes below Canelo, respectively. Before the Mungia bout was confirmed, there were whispers that Crawford might take on Canelo next. Canelo, though, swiftly withdrew from the battle. When Box Azteca asked Canelo if he would take on Crawford, Canelo replied, no. The interviewer reminded Canelo of the lucrative potential of accepting the fight, yet the boxing luminary deemed Crawford unworthy of the endeavor. He said, yes, but they're going to criticize me and that's it, they love it. They criticized me because I fought Jermel Charlo who gained weight, who is bigger than me, because I'm a small fighter for these weights, and because he gained weight, but they didn't criticize him when I went up in weight. Although, Crawford hasn't said anything about a potential Canelo matchup. He did respond to his most recent appearance. He wrote on X. Looks like Canelo carried him the whole fight. For Crawford to meet Canelo in the ring, he'd need to ascend three weight divisions. But is he ready to embrace this daunting challenge? According to reports, he's more than ready to seize the opportunity and step up to the plate. Crawford has locked onto Canelo as his ultimate target. Yet before that showdown, he must navigate a formidable challenge in August at light middleweight against Israel Madrimov. Will this bout serve as a springboard toward Canelo or a roadblock? Esteemed boxing figures such as James Tony and Tim Bradley firmly believe in Crawford's invincibility. Nonetheless, can he defy expectations and dominate in a completely different weight division, subsequently ascending through others to eventually square off against Canelo? Looks like Crawford's gearing up for a showdown with a little warm-up bout on the horizon. According to the revered boxing icon Tim Bradley, this preliminary match is merely setting the stage for the main event, Crawford versus Canelo. Bradley couldn't help but laud Crawford, emphasizing his rigorous and awe-inspiring training routine. He bragged about Crawford doing 15 four-minute rounds, 12 with Shakur, three with Shakur's cousin. He added that there were four-minute rounds and only 30 seconds of rest. That's some serious dedication. One beats Terrence Crawford, and everybody's trying to age him out, and he grow. The dude two weeks ago did 15 four-minute rounds, 12 with Shakur, three with Shakur's cousin. Four-minute rounds, 30 seconds rest. Think about that. Bradley doesn't just see Crawford winning against Madrimov, he predicts a dominant performance. Bradley predicts that Bud is going to crush Madrimov in their upcoming bout. Strong words, but Bradley doesn't stop there. He claims credit for recognizing Crawford's talent early on, saying that he was the one who put him on note. He added that he was the first one to recognize him. He has a fight win? August 3rd. <laughs> so you'll do good at 54. He gonna crush, he gonna crush this dude at 54. Mama dog, like, ma, what is it, Madre dog? Israel Madrimov. He trains with Joel. He gonna, he gonna crush him. Regardless of whether that is accurate or not, James Tony undoubtedly sees Crawford's potential, and Bradley says that potential correlates to being able to defeat anybody. Tony was blunt while discussing Crawford's prospects of winning versus Canelo. He said that Bud would beat Canelo by KO. Bradley also echoed a similar sentiment and said that Crawford beats anybody he steps in the ring with. He emphasizes that Crawford isn't afraid to go the distance, but ultimately declares that no one beats Bud. Since 06, so you know you know him a lot longer than I am. So he got it. He got it. But you look good, champ. Yeah? You look good, champ. Yeah? Oh, you look good. You look good, man. Very, very real. Fist, feather fist, and Haney. Did you see him buckle him? Did you see that? Yeah. Huh? What does that say you about that chin of uh, up front? Oh, it's fight him for He just it. told me Crawford beats Canelo. Hey, Crawford beats anybody he steps in the ring with. Anybody. He don't go. No one beats him. No one beats Terrence Crawford. Those are some bold statements. Tony and Bradley are clearly thrilled about the possible fight, but is Bud as eager to take on Canelo? As Canelo's departure from his former promoter shrouds in mystery, a distinct truth emerges. Terrence Crawford eagerly awaits a showdown, dispelling any notion that Canelo's exit was to dodge him or David Benavidez. Crawford's fervor for a fight is palpable. Me and Canelo have never talked about fighting, Crawford admitted, but then he dropped the mic. Yeah, that's a fight I would take in a heartbeat, and I would look forward to taking it. But no, I don't think he moved because of Terence Crawford or Benavidez. Will Canelo answer the call? Only time will tell. But Crawford seems more than ready to throw down, 
but the current scenario is a bit different. Now, fueled by ambition and the tantalizing prospect of facing off against Canelo, Crawford sets his sights even higher, eager to carve out new heights in his boxing journey. For several years, Crawford and Spence were headed for a confrontation, but Crawford prevailed in this one-sided battle. Although Crawford hasn't competed since that match, his name is frequently brought up when talking about some of the biggest bouts in sports history. Moving up to 168 pounds to challenge Canelo would mark a significant shift for Crawford, and Oscar De La Hoya, who previously promoted Canelo, has weighed in on the possibility of such a matchup. He remarked that Crawford was indeed a special fighter, but he expressed uncertainty regarding whether Crawford possessed the power to keep Canelo at bay. De La Hoya described the relentless pressure Canelo applied during a fight, suggesting that after the sixth or seventh round, Crawford might begin to feel the effects, with his legs weakening and his head spinning, questioning his presence in the ring. That's very ambitious. Man, it's ambitious, man, but that's Crawford. Look, Crawford is a master. He is a master performer. Like he, he's 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 a special fighter. He's a special fighter. I just don't know if he has the power to keep Canelo off. And that pressure that Canelo keep putting putting on you after the sixth, seven, eighth round, man. Let me tell you, your legs will start going. Your head will start spinning. Like what the hell am I doing here? It'll be a tough fight. On the other hand, David Benavides has shifted his focus away from pursuing a showdown with Canelo, as he now sets his sights on establishing himself in the light heavyweight ranks. After enduring years as the mandatory challenger for Alvarez's super middleweight crown in the WBC Benavides's patience seems to have reached its breaking point. The relentless wait to face the undisputed champion has finally taken its toll on him. He stated, I did everything I could do at 168 pounds. I've been there for 10 years. The only other thing I had to achieve was fighting for the unified world titles. And Canelo Alvarez is holding all of them, so he doesn't want to give me the fight. Benavidez continued by stating that he had been the WBC mandatory for the past three years and had exhausted all efforts to secure that fight. Despite his efforts, he had not yet received the opportunity, so he declared that he wouldn't wait around for anyone. He said, I've been the WBC mandatory for the past three years. I've done everything I could do to get that fight. I still haven't gotten it, so I'm not going to wait around for anybody. I'm going to go make my own lane at 175 pounds, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Meanwhile, Canelo was recently probed about his willingness to step into the ring with David Benavidez, a match eagerly anticipated by boxing enthusiasts worldwide. Alvarez opted to keep his response succinct, hinting at a period of recuperation before making any definitive decisions. However, Sean Porter argues that amidst the clamor for Alvarez's next opponent, there's a contender who stands out even more than Benavidez, none other than Terence Crawford. Porter discussed Alvarez's next fight following his victory over Mungia, saying this, The two fighters right now who deserve a fight with Canelo Alvarez, Terence Crawford won, and then David Benavidez, two. Terence has just done it all. He's really earned it. Similarly, Floyd Mayweather has put forth a straightforward remedy, a showdown between Crawford and Benavidez. Such a clash between these titans of the ring would surely draw as much attention as any bout featuring Canelo Alvarez. Speaking to Ben Thompson from Fight Hype, Mayweather proposed, if Crawford wants to go to 168 and he wants to fight Canelo, and Benavidez wants to fight Canelo. They can't get Canelo. They can fight each other, Benavidez and Crawford. Additionally, with Crawford unable to seal a bout against Canelo or secure a rematch with Errol Spence Jr., Mayweather turned his attention to Ennis, deeming him a formidable contender. Thompson hinted in the interview that Crawford might not make as much money. Going up against Jaron Ennis, Mayweather retorted that he had no idea what these fighters desired. However, he stated, I'm saying you gotta ask yourself, is it about the legacy? Is it about the money? Is it about both? If you do want to fight, fight. If you don't fight him, fight somebody else. However, boxing legend Mike Tyson had different plans, even though Mayweather advised Crawford and Benavidez to choose other opponents. Recently, news circulated that Canelo had rejected a hefty $60 million proposal to face David Benavidez. Unsurprisingly, this decision drew ire from Mike Tyson, who voiced his disapproval of the Mexican boxing sensation during an interview with Marca. Tyson said, What's wrong with Canelo? Is he afraid of losing? Tyson further added, If I were him, I would accept the fight with Benavides and show the world that he is the best. But it seems he doesn't have the courage to do it. It is a shame because he has a lot of talent, but he lacks heart. Meanwhile, Juan Manuel Marquez, 
a four-weight class champion, issues a cautionary message to Crawford before he ventures into Canelo's territory. Marquez believes that challenging Canelo would present numerous advantages for the Mexican fighter, advising Crawford against even contemplating such a matchup. Marquez acknowledged, Crawford's a great fighter, but we need to realize weight classes exist for a reason. His stance is clear. A significant weight disparity gives Canelo a hefty advantage. He mentioned, Crawford needs to fight at the welterweight division, or at super welterweight maximum, because Canelo would have too many advantages. Marquez made a compelling case advocating for Crawford's continued presence in the welterweight realm, or perhaps pushing it to the super welterweight tier at most. Beyond a mere technical analysis, it resonates as a plea for equity in the sport. Marquez appears to express that a bout conducted in such circumstances would not truly measure skill, but rather serve as a platform for showcasing Canelo's physical prowess. The esteemed fighter also subtly gestures toward what he perceives as the genuine desires of the fans, he declared. The people want to see the Canelo vs. Benavidez fight, but Canelo demonstrates astute business acumen alongside his legendary boxing prowess. Asserting his prerogative to select bouts according to his vision, he appears less inclined towards a matchup with David Benavidez. Canelo readily admitted his privilege. He said, I can fight any fighter, and I earn my good money, and I can do whatever I want right now, and I deserve it, because I've done everything thing in my career, and I deserve to be in this position. As discussions intensify, it becomes evident that both Crawford and Canelo harbor distinct advantages and reservations regarding such a showdown. Make sure to check out some of our other videos on the screen if you enjoyed this one.